देने वाले Kyle, do you, do, would you care to lift your voice higher than anybody here, even above mine? Do it. Thank you, Holy Jesus. Keep going. Go ahead, bro. Yeah, I'm taking the devil's <laughs> How did that feel, Kyle? How did it feel to open your mouth? How did it feel to let it out? When you sit here like this, what is people going to think about me? What are people going to think? What am I are they going to think I'm radical? They're going to think I'm a crazy. They're going to think this. You stand up, throw your hands up, and lift your voice and start praising God with a loud voice. Is there a young lady? Come on, you stand up. Lift your hands. Now start praising him with a loud voice. Can I have at least at least ten girls that will lift their voice and stand up right now and not be ashamed? Can I have at least ten boys that will stand up and lift your voice and say, I'm not going to be ashamed. I'm taking your place, devil. I'm taking your place. I'm taking your place. You don't like it because I'm taking... Hey, you parents, if you don't mind, I want you to praise him silently. I want every adult, every counselor praise him silently. I want to hear the voice of these kids for the next 30 seconds. Go! Loud! Lift your voice! Loud! I can't hear you girls. I'm right here in front of you. If you can't praise Him in front of this youth camp, You'll never praise him in the high school. You'll never praise him in the junior high school. If you can't praise him right now, you'll never praise him at the house. Lift your voice. Come on, parents, you can join in now. Lift your hands and give God glory. The devil got fired and I got hired. You can be seated if you can. If you can't, it's all right. <laughs> Go ahead, Kyle. Anthony, you're his brother. I want you to stand and do what Kyle's doing. Come on, lift your hands and don't care what nobody thinks about you. Now lift your voice. Loud, praise him. Brandon, you want to join him? Lift your hands. Go ahead, lift your hands and praise him loud. Loud. Say, I don't care if my friends hear me. I don't care if my... I don't care if my date to the banquet hears me. How about my gluttony girl? Stand up. Raise your hands, baby. Start praising him. <laughs> Somebody give God some glory in this house. You say this ain't a night service of a youth camp. What are you talking about? <laughs> There's a move of God in this house. There's an eruption about to take place because we're dealing with rebellion. And when we get obedient, we're going to bring in a draw to fish. <laughs> You're shouting and there ain't even no music. You're dancing and there ain't even no music. You don't know why? We're being obedient right now. You be seated if you can. Do you know what texting's done to you? Taught you to how to have a voice without with being silent? It's taught you to have a voice without talking? You know what Xbox and PlayStation's taught you? How to be quiet. So when you come to the house of God, you know how to communicate. But God says, I want voices. I hear your heart, but I want a voice. When you praise me, I want you to lift your voice. Josh, stand up. Throw your hands in there. 
Come on, praise him with a loud voice. I don't care what nobody thinks about me. Come on. Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Come here. You just open your voice in front of 200 people by yourself with everybody else being quiet. How does it feel? Huh? Awesome. You know why? He's quiet. He says, Pastor, I can't do that. That's the first time he's ever done that out loud in front of everybody. You know why? Just like today. He don't know anybody. He kind of stays to himself. So I went there and told him and his sister both. I said, you're going to get up here and you're going to slide and you're going to play water balloons. Or I'm going to get you. Guess what? He didn't play. He got involved. And once he got involved, he come down there. I thought he's coming in to get ready. He goes, Pastor, he said, some of my friends I met today want me to go eat with them, so I'm going to eat. First thing, he opened the door, I was taking a nap, and he hollered. He went, yes, or hey, or something like that. I was like, what? I woke up, and I said, what? He goes, nothing, because then I hurt his feelings. <laughs> Amen. I said, what are you going to say? He said, I was just going to say, I'm so glad I came. I said, why are you glad you came? Now, because you broke out of your shell, and you got involved with people that you do not know. Oh, God, I feel the Holy Ghost in this house. I come to tell you, you don't have to be disobedient. You don't have to be rebellious. It's a cool thing to be obedient. It's an awesome thing to yield yourself to the Holy Ghost. It's an awesome thing to yield yourself to the power of God. Give Him a hand clap of praise all over this house. And guess what? Y'all ready for me to close? Huh? Tell me one of the greatest warriors in the Bible that you remember from Sunday school. One of the strongest men. Shout his name. Yeah. Samson. Samson did what, Trey? Shout it out loud. I want to hear you. I don't want to hear no PlayStation talk or text talk. I want a loud voice like a trumpet. Stand up and say it loud. What did Samson do? It all came together then? Okay. Now, you just told me all the negative about him. Okay? There is a Delilah, and there's a Delilah always comes into your life too. Cuts your strength off. Okay? So guess what? Tell me right now, Trey, the good things in Samson. What did he do? He pushed the pillars down, right? Killed more Philistines in his death than he did in his life. Let me ask you this. Anybody else know what he did? Anybody know what he did with his strength real quick? He took the gates off of a city, put them on his back, and ran off of them. Somebody else. With a jawbone of a donkey, he killed a thousand Philistines. He tied foxes' tails together. Set them on fire. And sent them into the field. Let them burn it all up. Who was he? A deliverer of Israel. But let me show you his life. Do you know what? Samson never really was the man of God he should have been until he died. Because get this. He was part of the Nazarite vow which was given when Israel was backslid to show them how backslid they were. Because long hair is rebellion. So when they walked around with rebellion and they looked at Samson, it was a reminder of how lost and backslid and rebellious they were. So, oh God help me, I don't even want to go there. So that's when people say, you teach it, we should have short hair on the guys, but yet Samson had long hair. 
He had long hair because God gave it to him because they were in a backslid condition. And every time Samson walked around, his hair showed it was a sign of how rebellious they were. It wasn't a good thing. Come on, somebody. Guess what else Samson couldn't do? Samson was not supposed to eat grapes. Samson was not supposed to date any woman except his fam the, the, the children of Israel. But what did he do? He went down and found him a woman. You know what he come back and told his parents? Go get her. Go get me that woman. Read it. I can read it to you. You want me to read it to you? The Bible says, she said, he said, Go, I found me a woman. He saw her and he told his father and mother, I see me a woman. Now, therefore, go get her for me. And his mom and daddy go, Samson, don't you want one of our girls? Our girls are pure. Uh, God don't want us marrying outside of our, our, our seed and who we are. Don't you want one of ours? And guess what he said to them? She pleases me well. Go get her. Now see, I didn't know that. I thought Samson was a hero of the faith all them years. But guess what? Samson was rebellious. And he had a mom and daddy who let him have what he wanted. Come on, somebody. I feel like preaching here today. I want you to know the most damnable thing your parents can do to you is let you do what you want to do. If you got a mama that won't let you go out with your friends, you ought to give her a hand clap. If you got a daddy that won't let you listen to wrong music, won't let you dress immodest, you ought to give your daddy a hand clap. If you got a mama that'll tell you no, you ought to boho shatana mahaya. Give him a hand clap. That's right, Kaylee. Give me a hand clap. How much mess would you be in if I hadn't stood against sometime in his younger teenage days? He wouldn't be in this youth camp preaching this meeting. But we stood nose to nose, and he'd tell me, this is when he's 16 years old, he's going through that state of giving up himself. Simon had to give himself up and say, Nevertheless, not my will, but thy will. James had to come to that place at 16. Yes, he had been saved. Yes, God was with him, but he had to come to that place that he said, Nevertheless, not my will, but what your will. Father, talking about God as a father. God as his word. And then I'm going to be obedient to my father because that's God's word. He stood nose to nose with me. He said, I'll never be what you are. You and mom are super spiritual people. You're, 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 you're freaks almost because you've been giving God your life since you was a kid. And you're not normal. Normal kids can't do what you do. Am I right, Bo? I'm saying that as a testimony to him to show you what God has done in his life. Do you know why he's been to Haiti? In the last three months, three times in Fisco, it's four times, four months. Do you know why he just got to do his dream and backpack four hours into the mountainous church where no white man has been to preach the gospel? And when he called me, Sister Rice, I said, Bubba, you're doing something I've never been able to do in my 37 years. Brother Phillips, he packed, packed into that country where no man had been to preach the gospel. Amen. Except them Haitians. Hallelujah. Preach the gospel. Now they want him to come back and do a three-night revival. They want to build a church back there. Come on, somebody. You know why he's taking up the draw of fishes? You know why he's casting out his net and he's taking so much he can't keep it all? I'll tell you why. He cried, nevertheless, not my will, but thy will be done in my life. But it didn't come easy. He had to defeat that independent spirit in but you got to understand something. From the time he was 2 to 10, he lived on the streets. He ate what he wanted, what he could get. He survived. He didn't have to say, yes, ma'am, no, ma'am, to nobody. Do you know that he's my son? We adopted him as far as adoption. We never did the paperwork because it would have cost us several thousand dollars. So his, uh, his foster care mama signed him over to us. 
at any moment, he could have walked out of my house because I had no papers on him. He was 14 years old, 15 years old, talking to girls 24 hours 7. But when he come in my house, it's a rule. You cannot talk on the phone to a girl until you're 16 years old and prove yourself. And he submitted himself to that authority and come under that submission and cut it all off and never had to do it. He could have walked out anytime he wanted to, Trey, and say, forget this, I'm going back to my foster care mama. I can live like I want and do what I want. But you know what was in him? A desire to do the will of God. And a desire that said doing what I want is not the cool thing. And every time I whipped him, he had a choice to walk out of my house. But he stayed and took the whipping than to leave. Do you know how many boys and kids that I've had come through my church that I couldn't do nothing with? Do you know he's got a brother that we couldn't do nothing with? Do you know where he's at? Nowhere! Three years or two years or a year older than him and he has to support him at times because he would not come under authority. Married with three kids and he just had to send him money because he don't have no money to, take, to get to the doctor. And the brother that he laughed at and mocked at because he come under submission and he come under authority. He made fun of him and said, Amen, how can you live like this? How can you come under somebody else's authority? Come on, somebody. But here he is, years later, he's a man of God preaching all over the world. Hallelujah, in other countries. His brother said, Dun, come on. I'm show you I'm gonna behind. His brother's losing everything he's got right now. Are you understanding, Pastor, tonight? Satan don't care if you never smoke a cigarette, you never do a drug. Amen. As long as he can get an independent spirit in you that says, I'll do what I want to. But Christ is saying tonight, launch out into the deep. Simon goes, but I toiled all night. I called nothing. You can't catch fish in deep water. But nevertheless. At thy word, I will obey you. Come, Brother Steve, I'm getting ready to close. Man, I'm not even halfway where I need to be. Somebody shout, hurry up, Pastor Gray. Everybody knows the prodigal son? What did he say to his father? What? What? Give me what? Give me my money. Give me my inheritance. And guess what he did? He gave it to him, didn't he? What happened to the prodigal son? Where'd he go? Far country, and he wasted it. And when he come back, brethren, when he come back, when he come back, what did he say to his father? Turn the keyboard down, brother, so I'm louder than the keyboard, okay, for right now. I just want it in the background. Say it loud. You got to say it loud, brother, because I want them to hear what you're saying. He said, I would rather live as your slave and sleep in the servant's house and get to be under your authority than to have my own way and live like I want to live. And he said, make me one of your hired servants. Give me my stuff. Give me my fries. Give me what I want. Give me that pair of pants. Mama, if you don't buy that pair of pants for me, I'm. You don't do this for me. You don't do. Give me, give me, give me, give me. And the prodigal son came home and said, I've lost it all, Father. And I ain't worthy to even be called your son. I'd rather be a slave in your house than to live like I want to live and not have authority in my life. How many lift your hands right now and say, Make? Anybody thirsty tonight? Anybody want this? Okay. Does rebellion get you anywhere? How about you? Come here. Yeah. 
What are you willing to do for this? Will you do anything to get this? You'll do anything? Okay, stay right there. Turn around, look at them. I want you to bark like a dog. Louder. Louder. I want you to be a mean, crazy dog. Loud. Anybody want to compete against her for this Coke? Run to her. Run. I'm going to make you do it loud now because you're going to get loud because it's competition. You do it. Act like a crazy dog. Now your turn. She act crazy. Your turn. I'm going to give you another chance. I can't hear you. All right, your turn. Who do you think won the Coke? Her? Okay. She won the Coke. You got to stay right there. I'm going to give it to you in just a second. Stay right there. All right. Anybody hungry? Anybody like these kind? These are the dot kind. I love them. All right, Kyle. Since she was a good sport a while ago, what are you willing to do? Anything? Get right there. Anybody want to compete against Kyle? I want one of my boys. I want my boy that was on the slide today that lost his pants. Come up here. No, my buddy right with the yellow armband. Come on, run up here. Run, 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 run. You say, Brother Greg, you're losing the night. No, I'm not. Stay with me. You go ahead, brother. Come on, run, run. Now, Kyle, if you want this, I'm going to see who wants it bad enough. Stay beside him. I want you to act like a chicken. You got to do the movements and everything. Come on, make the noise. You got to make noise. Okay. Now, what's your name? Montreal. Think you can beat Kyle? Give me that chicken. You mean you're willing to do this for this bag of chips? You that hungry? All right, Kyle, we're going to give you another shot. See who wins. Better beat him loud. How many knows he's louder for this bag of chips than he was praising a while ago? Now, you got to get that crazy for Jesus, okay? Montreal, he's got your beat right now. I think Kyle was louder and did better. All right, Montreal, you go back. All right, stay right there. I'm going to give it to you in just a second, okay? Oh. She bang. Come on, you got to act crazy. All right. You come up. Get right here. You come up. All right. How bad do you? Come on, let me have your attention real quick. I know you're getting fun, but I'm still preaching to you. So this time you're ready. How bad do you want this? You're not? All right. Hey, shh. This is him. I want you to act like a bunkin' horse. Noise and all. Okay, then you'll be seated. You do it. A bunkin' horse. Just, just, just buck and holler. <laughs> Come on, give it to me. Come on, give it to me. Yeah! I don't even know how to act like a horse myself. Somebody know how to give a horse sound. Help her out. Come on. Okay. I need another boy that'll take his place. Come on, cowboy. Country boy can survive. Shh. Ready? Here we go. I'm still preaching on rebellion. I'm going to show you what rebellion gets you. Ready? Go. You got to give me some noises too. My goodness. You get a second shot. Go. This is weird. One, two, three. Go. All right. Your turn. One more time. Man, you want some Starbucks bad. Do it again. 
One, two, three. How many thinks he won? All right. You can go be seated. All right, here you go. Get up here. You ready? Hold these till I tell you to open them. I tell you to open this. You can play. You don't have no volume. He needs some volume monitoring. Ready? How many want them to have it? You think they deserve it? They acted crazy enough. Okay, hold on right there. Hold on. All right, you ready? Open your Coke. Drink it. You already know now what? It's empty. You just acted a fool and crazy for an empty Coke. Come on, Kyle. Open up your sun chips. Toilet paper? You just acted like a chicken in front of Copy C U Count 2012 for a bag of toilet paper. You just got on all fours and did the bunkin' bull horse, whatever it's called, or Starbucks. Open up yours. Sorry, my kids done ate them all. You made a fool out of yourself for nothing. I'm going to get y'all some after church, okay? Come see me and I'm going to get you what I gave you because I'm not going to do you wrong. Do you know what I started to do? I started to go buy an Xbox take the Xbox out, I'd ask Walmart could I return it and let you act crazy for an Xbox. For an Xbox. Then when you open it up, it ain't nothing but the Xbox. But I didn't want to hurt your feelings and let you be let down any more than what you have been let down in your life. So I said, Starbucks ain't that big. This world will cause you to act crazy rebellion will cause you to act crazy and at the end of the day you will have empty promises the enemy will cause you James to act crazy for what you want for what you desire and when it's over brethren how many times have you, have you done stuff that was totally out of your character all because you wanted something and then you got it and what, what, what you wanted? It, wasn't, it didn't fulfill you, did it? Josh, gains, drugs, at 12 years old. Somebody said, how in the world? We live in such a close society, you don't see this, but in South Florida, it's that way. Did it make you happy? Cassie, stand up, baby. Come 14 years old, accidentally overdosed. I want you to be seated right now, baby. You can go to the bathroom in just a second. 14 years old, accidental overdose on alcohol twice. Rushed to the hospital twice. She got to my house. We had a get-together. She's my wife's cousin. She come out with not Daisy Dukes, less than Daisy Dukes. She come out with less than I let my daughter go to bed in. And come walking across the backyard where we was playing volleyball with our church. Prison. It's just her lifestyle. Drugs, partying. Boys climbing out of the bedroom window. But was it worth it? Is that all I get? Is just a shake of hand? Shout it out loud. It was never worth it. How happy are you, baby? What? I, I was kidding. <laughs> God saved her, sanctified her. You'd never know she was that kind of... You would never know that's where she used to be, would you? She's a pretty Pentecostal little girl now and have to beat the boys away from me. I say, she's mine! 
And if you even dare think you're going to ask her to the banquet, you've got to ask me first. And I'm going to say this. She went to stay with her dad last year and had a world of opportunity, but turned it all down to stay with Christ. This year she had an opportunity to go two and a half months. But the Lord dealt with her that she didn't need to go and she didn't understand why because it's her dad and she loves him. But she chose to follow Christ. Your hair got my mic. You would never know the change in her unless you saw it with your eyes. It didn't happen overnight. But it happened because you was willing to say, nevertheless, not my will, thy will. She's in a battle right now because of the fact that she just chose to go with Christ over her dad this summer. So she, the devil's bombarding her. She's broken because she wants to see her dad. But she wants to serve God too, and she don't understand why she couldn't go, but yet God wanted her to stay. God had a purpose and reason. If for no other reason, to testify to some young lady here that if he can do it for her, tell him. Say it loud. You got to understand how shy she is. How many say, Pastor Greg, I'm tired of doing things yes. for the pleasure of this world and emptying up with empty chip bags, empty Coke cans? Say, Brother Greg, God's talking to me tonight. I got a seed of rebellion in me and I, I, independence. And I want to say tonight, nevertheless, thy will be done in my life. If God's talking to you, I want you on your feet. And then don't play games with me. But if God's talking to you right now, there's deliverance in this. I need Holy Ghost filled people that'll come help me pray. Because we just have deliverance right here tonight. Come on, I need Holy Ghost filled people that'll run up here and get on the front. Because we just to pray. Some of the kids just stay back. I'm, I want the adults right now, okay? Adults to come right now. Just line up across this front. We're just to pray for these kids. We're going to pray. That seed of rebellion in your heart. This is how we're going to give the altar call. I want you to, when you stand, I want you to stand saying, I have an independence about me. And I have a stubbornness about me. And I want it out of my life because I don't want to walk in destruction. I don't want the little devil to destroy my life. And I want victory and I want deliverance. Now, if God's talking to you and God's speaking to you, would you stand to your feet in Jesus' name? That's it. I wouldn't care what nobody thought about me. Say, Brother Greg, I want to get it out of my life tonight. I don't want to shout over it. Come on, Trey, is that right? I don't want to shout over it no more. I don't want to dance over it no more. I don't want to just speak in tongues over it no more. Because the enemy's going to destroy my life, and he's not going to destroy it by something he gets me to do. He's already got me walking in rebellion. Is this it? Three, I'm counting down. Two, and then I'm going to give the altar call. Come on, stand if God's talking to you. Two. All right, one. All right, zero. I want you to run right here. Meet me right here as these. I'm going to get up on the platform so these can pray for you. Then I'm going to help pray with them. Come on, run right now in the name of Jesus. Come on, run, 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 run. Come on, young people. God, I want everything you got for my life. Nevertheless, not my will, but your will be done. Come on, lift your voice, young ladies. Come on, young men. Lord, I want to get this independence out of me. I want to get this rebellious part of me out of me. Come on, come on, come on, come on. Go ahead, Braden. I want to get it out of me. I don't want no rebellion in me. I don't want any independence in me. I want to submit myself to authority. 
I don't want to follow the commandment of the satanic church. Come on, Cassie, I need you in this altar, baby. Come on, I need people praying in this altar. Come on, Darren, that's right, baby. Come on, Josh. Go ahead, Darren, that's right, buddy. Come on, come on. Oh, and I don't want to spend my whole life asking What if I'm giving everything Instead of going through the motion Oh, Jesus, I give you all of me, Lord Come on, I don't want to stay like I am Nevertheless, not my will, but your will be done Listen, I'm not here about a shout tonight. I'm here about deliverance and victory and obedience. I'm here to see radical changes made in the lives of young people. making a fool out of me and I get nothing but empty chip bags, empty Coke cans, empty bags, empty promises, empty things in my life. Oh, yeah. Oh, I don't want to go through the motions anymore. I want to surrender my life. Come on, Kyle. I want to live my voice. I want to live my voice. I want to be. I want to take the devil's place. I don't want to go one more day without your all consuming passion inside of me. I don't want to spend my whole life asking what if I'd given everything? Instead of going through the motions Come on, I'm ready for change I'm ready for deliverance 